Hollywood has definitely ramped up the amount of on-screen gore and violence over the years, but there have been a few movies that managed to exceed anyone's expectations. Some movies live on in infamy for taking things just a bit too far. Thanks to some supremely excessive brutality, here are some films that have become unforgettable for all the wrong reasons. Hold on to your butts. Old Boy when we're talking about Old Boy, we're of course referring to Park Chan-wook's timeless, jaw-dropping film and not the unfortunate Spike Lee remake. For those unfamiliar with the Korean revenge flick, a deadbeat alcoholic dad gets abducted and locked in a tiny hotel room for 15 years straight, with no rhyme or reason as to why he's been in prison there. Understandably, as soon as he's released, he immediately sets out on a revenge mission and finds one of the people hired to keep him in confinement. To get back at him, he whips out a claw and hammer and goes to town on the man's mouth. And let's just say the resulting scene makes your worst trip to the dentist look like a vacation to Disney World. <coughs> Fight Club David Fincher's Fight Club had its fair share of scenes that went too far. It spliced single frames of full frontal nudity into various parts of the movie, and its underground fights had just enough meat-smacking oomph to them that viewers felt every blow. Edward Norton's unnamed everyman protagonist had a lot of pent-up rage against the world, and he was finally starting to let it trickle out after learning the ways of the traveling soap salesman Tyler Durden. Perhaps the most grueling moment of the movie, though, happens when Norton's character faces down Jared Leto's angel face and pounds him into absolute oblivion going well beyond the established rules of Fight Club. Norton's fists bashing into the man's once pristine visage until it's a bloody pulp of bruises and broken teeth easily leaves viewers stupefied by the narrator's sadistic, relentless assault. Human Centipede If you're unfamiliar with the premise of the human centipede, a quick Google image search should be able to convey the sick experiments done by the film's maniacal villain. Three tourists get drugged and imprisoned by a mad German surgeon who hopes to create a new life form by sewing people together. So the devilish dude stitches the poor trio into succession, from mouth to butt, with the hopes that they form one single digestive tract. And as you might imagine, things don't go exactly to plan. Guys. I'm really sick. It's just as abhorrent and barf-worthy as you would expect, and the sequels only get worse from there. Dead Alive Before Peter Jackson became a household name with Lord of the Rings, he directed a series of low-budget B-movies and horror flicks. The most noteworthy of his earlier films would have to be Dead Alive. This splatter flick focused on a man whose mother gets bitten by a Sumatran rat monkey and spreads an undead plague throughout town. The central character then goes to absurd lengths to save himself and his girlfriend from the decaying cannibal horde. And as gross, macabre, and fun as Dead Alive is, its most messed up part would have to be when a zombie baby rips its way out of the face of a poor victim at our hero's house. Just use your imagination to figure out how the creature got in there and kiss your appetite goodbye forever. The Exorcist William Friedkin's groundbreaking horror film broke barriers and introduced a new kind of terror that moviegoers were simply not ready for. Linda Blair's portrayal of 12-year-old Regan McNeil's demonic possession was unlike anything fans had ever seen. Little Regan's various stages of transformation and torture were both vivid and terrifying, and the movie-loving world would be hard-pressed to forget her gravity-defying levitation, that 360-degree head rotation, and all the projectile vomit. And yet, all of it paled in comparison to the most shocking and controversial part of The Exorcist, that crucial scene. When it comes to possession-centric violence, it just doesn't get any worse than that. A Serbian Film Now, here's a movie that might just be better left unseen altogether, if not for its technical brilliance. A Serbian Film tells the story of a semi-retired porn star who is at the end of his rope financially and decides to film some kind of artsy film that he isn't used to making. For some reason, the art film's creators need a man of his talents, and it isn't until he reaches the set when he finds out why. The art project is actually a snuff film, filmed with horrific things no one should ever get any kind of enjoyment out of watching or filming. Writer-director Serjan Spazajakovic has said that the film's controversial violence is symbolic of the Serbian people's horrific mistreatment by their government. He wanted to create the opposite of the dull, predictable, and uninspired flicks made by his countrymen, but unfortunately the rest of the world didn't care for his graphic metaphor. A Serbian film has since been banned in multiple countries and pulled from the shelves of most major movie retailers. Antichrist Director Lars von Trier is accustomed to controversy, with a filmography that includes projects like Dogville, Melancholia, and Nymphomaniac. 
but his 2009 film Antichrist is the project that pushed viewers to the very brink of their sanity. Willem Dafoe and Charlotte Gainsbourg portray a couple who mourn the loss of their toddler who fell to his death while they were getting hot and heavy. The father is a therapist who decides to help his traumatized lover by taking her to a cabin in the woods. What happens there forces the mourning mother off the deep end. Gainsbourg's character eventually tortures herself and her lover in all kinds of appalling ways, and the part that'll really make you cry occurs when Dafoe's crown jewels get smashed to bits by a giant block of wood. I think I'm gonna be sick. Surprisingly enough, things actually do get worse from that point forward because this movie just couldn't stop at tortured nether regions alone. Of course not. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.